What's up everybody today, we've brought another awesome story with Revenge Tales. My fiancé cheated in me with my father and tried to pass off his baby as mine. I am a 30-year-old man who was engaged to a 27-year-old woman. For the sake of understanding, here's the backstory. Sue's name has been changed for the purpose of this article and I met at a friend's engagement party. She was a stunning woman, blonde hair, tall, skinny and beautiful who had a great sense of humor and kept me entertained while at my friend's engagement party. Soon, we started dating, and I knew I wanted to spend the rest of my life with her. I proposed to her and asked her to move in with me, but she was reluctant to so I thought it was because she didn't want to let go of her independence. I usually spent more time at her place than she did at mine. She stayed in the city while I had a house in the suburbs that was almost paid for. I didn't mind because it meant that I could spend nights at her apartment instead of driving back home. She was a nurse, and I had to stay alone in her apartment on the nights she had late shifts. I understood that she wasn't ready to move in with me because she would be giving up certain privileges. She didn't have a car and commuting would have been very difficult for her. She wanted me to move in with her, but like I said earlier, I had already practically finished paying off the mortgage on my house. Her apartment was also too small for both of us to live in. COVID happened, and because of the lockdown, she decided to move in with me. As an essential worker, she was gone most of the time while I stayed at home. I was a software engineer, so I could work from home. Because of the pandemic, we put our wedding plans on hold. My father had flown in so he could be there for the wedding, and he ended up being stuck. He didn't have to go to work so he ended up leasing Sue's apartment since it was still empty and she wasn't ready to let go of it yet. It is important to note that my father and I weren't really close at this point, but we were cool. He walked out on my mom and me when I was still a teenager so he could be with his secretary who was just six years older than me. I grew past the resentment of him, leaving since he didn't skimp on child support. He just wasn't interested in staying in my life. While I was in college, my mum died, and he showed up at the funeral. He told me that he would still cater to my needs, and I didn't have to leave my stepfather if I didn't want to. My stepfather was cool with me staying, and my father continued paying for my living expenses until I finished college. We would meet whenever he flew in for dinner or lunch. Most of the time, he was with different women, who looked to be around my age or younger. I didn't approve but I didn't care either. I thought it was none of my business. He wasn't married or in any committed relationship. I just gave a background of my relationship with my dad before I continue with my story. When the lockdown restrictions were withdrawn, Sue made a big decision. She wanted to quit her job so she could make a career transition into tech. She told me that she was burned out with her work. I was making a six-figure as a Larry so I could cover both our living expenses without any problems. I decided to help her by offering to cover her living costs. She paid for her classes by herself, and she started staying home with me. I got her a workspace next to mine so she could attend classes while she was seated next to me. We spent a lot of time together, and on some nights, we would invite my dad over for dinner too. My father decided that he liked staying in the same city as me and that he didn't have any plans of leaving again. I didn't mind his decision, since he wasn't intruding in my life. Later I found out that it was because he had gotten a new girlfriend that he was pretty serious with. For context, my dad is a wealthy man. He inherited some major shares from his parents, and was patient enough to wait until he was in his late forties to sell them. The shares were worth quite a huge sum of money, and he also had a job as an executive in a multinational company, so he was earning quite a lot. As soon as I started getting used to my new lifestyle, I got promoted at work. Even though I still got to work from home, I also had to go into work occasionally. I was always happy to come back home to meet Sue at home. We were having a lot of sex during our free time. Sue started getting antsy. She was feeling cooped up in the house, so after we talked about it, she decided to get a part-time job back at her old workplace. She was a temp nurse, so she wasn't taking as many shifts, and she was getting paid more than she had been getting before. 
She still took online classes, but not at the frequency that she had been taking them before. Three months after she starts working again, she starts complaining about being too tired. She looked exhausted too. I gave her massages when I could and advised her to take some time off work so she could rest. She told me that she couldn't because nobody could take her shifts if she wanted to take some time off. I let it go. Then she started coming home with expensive stuff that she bought. I wasn't really suspicious of her purchases because she liked shopping a lot. Before we got engaged, she was always starving herself just so she could buy designer clothes and shoes. So I figured that she could afford to buy all those stuff because she didn't have to worry about living expenses. She slowly began taking more and more shifts until her schedule was back to the way it was before. I barely got to see her, since her off days coincided with days I had to go to work, and she left for work while I was still sleeping, and she got in right before I went bed. Despite her busy schedule, we still found time to make love. We started planning our wedding six months after she started working. She reduced her workload significantly to, in her words, allow us to focus more on the wedding planning. I had no problems with it and went along with her plans. I was too busy with work to pay attention to the wedding plans with her. I trusted her decisions. Then one night, she comes home and tells me that she is pregnant. I was ecstatic. I bought her a ton of things and took her to dinner with my dad and his new girlfriend, who is just as excited as I am. Sue decided to quit her job so she could be a psalm and I agreed to it. By this time, I was already done paying off the mortgage, and I was in a really good place financially. I could provide all right for my family. Life was good for us. I would come back from work and Sue would tell me all about her day and the preparations that she had been making for the wedding. I noticed that my dad almost always spent the day with her in one capacity or the other. I was glad. It meant they were getting along well. What I didn't know was that she always told me about spending the day with him so they could cover their tracks. When the phone bill came for the month, I noticed that she was almost always on the phone with him. They were sending a lot of texts back and forth to each other. Now knowing what was going on between the both of them, I feel so stupid and angry. I started getting suspicious when Sue still kept on coming home with shopping bags from luxury stores. She wasn't supposed to have that much money since she wasn't working anymore, and she wasn't spending my money. I tried asking her how she was getting the money to buy all those things, and she gave me some vague answers. My bullshit meter was ringing off the charts, so I decided to snoop around. She must have realized that I was suspicious of her, so she stopped bringing the new stuff into the house. But I would notice her sporting a new bag or new shoes that I had not seen her wearing before and I realized she was still buying expensive stuff. I checked her purse and found a receipt from the last time she had gone shopping. It had been two days before then, and I found out that she hadn't gotten those things for herself. My father's name was on the receipt as the purchaser. When she came in, I confronted her about the receipt, and she told me that my father had needed ideas in buying his girlfriend a present, and she had given him advice. As a reward for her help, he had gotten her those things from the store. Her explanation seemed plausible, but things weren't adding up. There was no way my dad would blow about 5k on my fiancé just because she had helped him choose a gift. I started thinking about everything and then realized that my fiancé and father found a way to almost spend every day together. My father was spending more time with Sue than he was spending with his own girlfriend. I didn't have much to go on but I was sure that something was definitely going on with the both of them. I started by installing a GPS tracker in Sue's car, so I knew where she went every time, and secretly installed cameras in all the rooms in the house. The first week, I didn't get anything from them. The only places that she visited were the doctors and the supermarket. I waited, reasoning that it was just a matter of time before they did something out of the ordinary. I got the opportunity I was waiting for when Sue forgot her phone at home. While she made a quick run to the store, I knew her phone password, but I never checked her phone without reason. I discovered that she had changed the password. 
I returned her phone and waited for her to get back. I studied her for another week, so I could get her new password and I did, and then waited for an opportunity to get a hold of her phone. This time, she left the phone on the coffee table while she went to take a bath. I went to her messaging app, but I saw nothing there, so I start checking through her social media apps. I hit the jackpot on WhatsApp. She had been clearing her chats with him, so I didn't really get much. But she had sent him risque pictures of herself just earlier that evening with the message, All yours, Daddy. My father hadn't replied yet, but it told me all I needed to know. My father and fiancé were fucking behind my back. The next couple of days were hell for me. I took a leave of absence from work and decided to go camping to clear my head. The night before I was supposed to leave, I see Sue's phone lying around again, and an idea occurs to me. I installed an app on her phone that would show me all her messages in real time and set it up so I would get notifications whenever she used her WhatsApp. I packed my stuff that night and headed to a hotel in the city where I drank my way through the day. The next day, I have a hangover, but gained a bit of clarity. If I wanted to this through, I needed to get all the proof I could get. I checked her phone in real time and saw that she had texted my father almost as soon as I left the house. After two hours, I see my father's car pull into my driveway through the cameras I had installed. My STBX fiancé came out to welcome him with a hug and a kiss. She was wearing a dressing gown, and when she removed it, I got even more heartbroken. It was the lingerie set I had gotten for her for Valentine's. She hadn't even worn it yet in my presence and she was wearing it for my father. There was no way I could let things go. The both of them had to pay for betraying me. I recorded their fling and kept the file hidden on my cloud. Sue had no reason to check, so she couldn't know that I was on to her and my father. I stopped drinking and started thinking of how to ruin them both. We still had three months to our chosen wedding date, and I had to end things before then, because there was no way I could marry her again. Break over, I went back home on the third day like I had planned. There was no sign of my father or that he had even been there. She greeted me enthusiastically and tried initiating sex, but I turned her down. Just being in the room with her repulsed me. I stared at her that night while she slept, wondering how she felt okay lying to my face and why. I took a look around the room. There was now new stuff. Stuff I wouldn't have noticed if I hadn't been looking out for them. There was a new winter coat that I knew she could not have afforded on her own and guessed that my father had gotten it for her. I watched her sleep some more and contemplated wrapping my hands around her neck. It seemed very tempting. I checked through her other messages, and it turned out that she had been talking to three other guys before my father came into the picture. They were all older men who were loaded with cash. I checked through her phone and found videos of her performing sexual act son, those men. The last time she had talked to any of the men was before she had moved into my house. It was now clear that the only reason why she had refused to move in with me in the first place was so she could have the time and privacy to sleep with other men. It explained most of the extra shifts and why she had wanted to go back to work so soon after retiring. It also explained the expensive purchases that she had been bringing home. The sad thing about the whole discovery was that I was always buying her expensive things as gifts because I knew how much she liked them and I wanted her to stop starving herself. I took screenshots of all the messages and printed them out. I hid the videos I got and put them along with the other one of her fucking my dad. The first step of her revenge was getting her to be financially dependent on me. I told her that I had been neglecting her and was going to start paying more attention to her and the baby from then on. I was paying for almost everything she wanted so I could lure her into a false sense of security. I would go out and randomly buy her stuff that I knew she liked and told her to stop spending her money when all she could do was ask me. She agreed being the greedy little bitch that she was. I wondered what she told my father, but after then, she stopped bringing new stuff home. I convinced my dad to buy a new apartment somewhere in the city so he could have some quality time with his girlfriend, 
who was also unaware of the fact that my father was a lying, cheating bastard. He told me he was going to propose to her, and I was happy, since that added a new twist to my plans. While I was spending more time with Sue, she still found time to text my father, and for them to meet up. I could see everything in real time, but I said nothing. At that time, I wasn't even heartbroken again. I just wanted to drag them through hell for what they had put me through. My father got a new apartment and moved out of Sue's apartment. I convinced her to sell and make a long-term investment with the money I asked her to buy crypto. The coin was unstable and would probably go defunct soon. She agreed and I helped her handle the entire transaction. I took hold of her finances and I discovered that she was practically flat out broke. Apparently, she had been receiving just gifts from her sugar daddies instead of money and since she had stopped working, she had no source of income. I continued gathering evidence in the months leading up to the wedding. My father asked me if he could propose to his real girlfriend during the rehearsal dinner, and I agreed to it. The printouts I made from their conversations had become almost as thick as a whole book. I told a guy that I knew had a publishing company that I wanted to convert the printout into small books with about 30 copies. That was the number of people expected to be at the wedding rehearsal, including Sue's family and friends. I had everything complied into the book, which I titled Sugar Baby Sue. It was bound to be a hit. I made arrangements with the wedding planner to include the book in the gift bag. We were giving everyone at the rehearsal dinner. The wedding planner read a copy of the book and turned red. I told her not to tell my STBX fiancé anything about the book if she didn't want to lose out on the bonus that she was going to get. I also told her to cancel all the bookings we made for the wedding since it wasn't going to happen, and that she should keep everything low-key. Luckily, I was able to recover my money from some of the vendors that we had contracted with. I made a montage of all the videos and sort of compressed it into one video. I added special effects and everything. I spoke with my father's girlfriend and told her everything that had been going on between the man she loved and the woman I loved. She was heartbroken and wanted to break up with him right away, but I begged her to wait until I had finished with my revenge. At the wedding rehearsal, my father stood up and went to the podium to take the microphone. I signaled to the DJ and my father's girlfriend. While my father was harping on all the values of marriage and how he knew Sue and I would make a great couple, the DJ was getting ready to play the video I had sent to him. When my father brought out the ring, he was going to use to propose. The entire audience gasped. He thought it was because of the ring, but it was because of the video playing in the background. Needless to say, everyone was horrified. I added a little speech at the end of the video telling them to check the special book that was in the gift bags. The party ended with Sue's parents yelling and screaming at her. I left without her and went back home. While we had been at the party, I had her stuff arranged outside the house and changed the keys and passcode to the house. She must have managed to catch a ride home because I heard her knocking on the door sometime during the night. The next day, I sent her a long message telling her that if she hadn't gotten the hint, I no longer wanted to do anything with her and that she shouldn't even bother trying to use the child as an excuse to remain in my life. I told her that when the baby was born, she should have her lawyer contact mine so I could have a DNA test done, and that it was only the results that would determine whether I would ever talk to her again. I didn't bother texting my father. I blocked them everywhere on social media and changed my lines. I even sold my house and bought an apartment in the city. I went completely no contact with them. Update. It's been nine months since then and Sue contacted me through my lawyer. The baby was three months old and she wanted to take the DNA test. The results came in and I am not the father of the baby and neither is my father. I can finally cut her completely out of my life. Thanks for watching my video, comments and suggestions are very much welcome.